The fishing gods are good. <laughs> so I'm going to thread this thing on. Came up and got it. Followed it all the way up. You know, I try to avoid telling you guys how much work goes into these videos because it, nobody wants to hear anybody like pissing and moaning about the level of work, especially for something that's fun. Fishing is like my passion. It's fun. It's such like a release and exhilaration. So I try to avoid like, you know, pissing and moaning about the amount of work that goes into these videos. But I want to tell you about today real quick. We have already been to one boat ramp where we're on Smith Lake, we're on Smith Lake Park. The water was so low, they pulled so much water out. So Smith Lake's known for being like super deep, 130, 80, 90 feet. Dude, we dropped the boat in and tried to idle out and got stuck on a freaking sandbar in two and a half, foot and a half feet like, of water, like idling out. So I'm like, oh my God, this is not gonna work. We're gonna break some. So we pull out and we go to the dam. So we're gonna try to catch some fish down here at the dam. Dude, look how low this is. I talked to somebody and he said it hasn't been this low. He's never seen it except for two years ago, it was this low. Now, if it's anything like Florida, low water means it congregates the fish and bunches them up, but it also means dangerous running. So we need to be really careful when we're out here. But like I said, I don't wanna bore you with how much work goes into the video, but basically we're, we got a road trip time that should have been about like two hours, like full round trip. We're looking at about four and a half at this point. So hopefully we can catch some fish. Right, Bob? <laughs> We don't want to get stuck. Uh, let's get after it. Fish on. Dude, I marked these guys. Oh, that's a good one. Dude, there's a bunch of them down there. This is a micro swim bait, guys. This is, oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is so cool, boy. Don't kill my swim bait. I just want my swim bait, and I want to go catch more of you guys. Dude, so we idle over this. Oh, I can see them coming up. Look at them all coming up. Look at that. That's these guys. Oh, we got to back off and catch some more. But um, I grabbed a micro swim bait because I saw a few on the bottom. And um, this is my Scottsboro little micro swim bait on a ball head. Pretty killer. She ate it as I was dragging it. Oh, might be a better one. She's sure coming in quick though. Guys, I just, I'm throwing this swim bait out and then um, letting it kind of drop to the bottom and, oh, nice. Slow reeling it and then um, kind of popping it and then just letting it go back to the bottom again. Oh, that's a freaking nice spot. Dude, there's a whole freaking pot of them. Like a whole pot of them. Come here, come here, come here. I want my swim bait. Bog, you like that bog? See that? That's that little micro swim bait on there. And just sticks them with that little ball head. What a beautiful fish. There's a bunch, dude. We're gonna be catching some fish here. The fishing gods are good. <laughs> <laughs> we got out here and we started catching them pretty good and on such a cool bait i i think these things are neat like a micro swim bait this is the scottsboro version we're probably going to try a few other different ones i get on a 3 a's ball head screw lock jig also scottsboro shout out to them they're freaking awesome but dude let me grab this swim bait and just show it to you because it is freaking the coolest thing it has that really tiny tail on it that just like just quivers but the trick we found is here's where we are you can see on my c-map we're kind of in a gut of a creek right here and and the fish seem to be set up along this break but in contrast to what the c-map says this is actually instead of 35 feet it's about 20 22 so it's not that deep and ironically you'd think like the fish would be on like that tree or this point right here 
dude, they're out in the middle because the bait's out in the middle. And they're on like a little bit of a break right there, a little bit of rock chunk, but they're just kind of swimming around chasing that bait. And we got them kind of set up on this, this windy side of the gut right here. And um, this is exciting. I like this kind of fishing, micro swim baiting. It's freaking cool. Yep, we got the retreat down, boys. Kinda feels better. Not a giant, but freaking, we got them dialed in and there's two pods. There's one right in front of us and then there's one, one right behind us. <laughs> oh, dude, then they eat it. Look how they freaking eat it. Look at that. Look how they freaking eat it. Is that not? The coolest thing. She went and got off. Guy right there. That is so cool. That is so freaking cool. <laughs> so as you guys can see, this bait has actually really lasted a really long time. But you see all the tooth marks on it? She's kind of tore up and I do want to do a test. So I'm going to, to go ahead and, and rip this thing off. And we're talking about like finesse or micro micro swim baits. So this is another, you guys know I love that mega bass stuff. It's called the Spark Shed. Kobe Pellerito actually put me onto it. And um, it's a super duper finesse kind of like tiny little swim bait. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to show you guys how this thing gets rigged. So we got our 3 8 ounce with the twist lock just like that so I'm gonna match up the hook to see where it comes out so it comes out right about there and sometimes I like to even just go ahead and put a little little mark on there with the hook and then I know where I need to pop it out so I'm going to thread this thing on and since the twist lock is on there you've seen me talk about it with the goat swim or the goat um, swim bait heads too is you don't always like get it on there just right so you got to kind of like line it up because then what you're going to do is you're going to twist just like that and what you're going to do is you're going to pass the tail over the hook like that as you're twisting this will be a good way to kind of experiment to see if they're looking for a different like a slightly different bait but you twist it till the head's directly on there and you get your presentation it's really cool looking too i mean if you don't like that you don't like fishing baits now i didn't do it perfect so what i can do is i can just rip the plastic just a hair and you see now it's symmetrical just like that and we're ready to go let's see if we can catch one on this thing all right Came up and got it. Followed it all the way up. Fish. Just had to get that retrieve right. You gotta kind of get them to react with this thing. Like they're they're not wanting to just bite it when it when I reel it. It's just a little guy. You guys can see we've casted it out there already. These are the guys we're targeting. These guys right here. So they're a little off the bottom, but they're kind of relating to the bottom. And I can't get them on just a steady retrieve like that. So I'm just like one, two, three. And then I'm almost hair jigging it to the bottom. I let it just pendle into the bottom on a, on a taut line. And then when I see it go slack, I'll just pop it again. And every once in a while, I'll slow reel it as well. chasing them. Dude, they're freaking eating it when they eat it too. That's freaking crazy. Well guys, that's a wrap on micro swim bait fishing. But I wanna show you the stuff that we used and I wanna give you a few kind of quick tips as well because there's some, some little nuances that you need to know about if you're doing this. So what we used, hello Bob. Everybody say hi to Bob. All right, now you need to get so we can do this. So what we used mainly and what we had the most success with was this guy right here. It's a Scottsboro Tackle. It's a custom swim bait. You can see it is all chewed up. Just a little kind of wagtail on there, fat little body. It's a custom pour so it's super soft. 
freaking awesome bait. The other one that we threw around a little bit too was the Spark Shed, this guy. Um, it's from Mega Bass, it's three inches. It's a little smaller and a little more slender than the, the Scottsboro, uh, but it's it's still, it fits right on the jig head perfectly. It, fish, it has that flat head, so it fits really flush. Super awesome bait. One that we actually didn't use that you can check out, I've used a couple of them, 2.8 inch Kitek. This is another example of a micro swim bait. This is a ribbed one. Um, the tail on this guy is a little bit bigger. It still has a very like, easy wobble i guess you could say so like you don't have to reel it that fast and it's still gonna wag pretty well but check that one out and then gambler has one too called the tz which is a little three inch bait this is actually one of my favorite colors it's like a it's bold or something it's got some blue iridescent in it but micro swim bait galore like the, there's a whole bunch of them that you can try and they're all really cool they're they're fun to fish and especially when you have like we're fishing spotted bass or if you got smallmouth or if you got hyper pressured waters this is something i'm going to try in gunnersville as well it, it's a much lower level of water displacement and we've talked about that in the past you know communicating with the fish's lateral line and i think that's important today what i was using let's see here let me get it out for you was a seven foot medium heavy ti halo um i was running it i like fishing them on a little higher speed reel um it's a 721 it's my old corrado um 12 pound fluorocarbon you can go down to 10 but I like doing it on 12. You can do it on spinning tackle as well, but the reason I went with bait casting tackle is it's a little more manageable, and I was throwing a 3 ace. A lot of times you'll do this with just a quarter ounce, um, but since we were going a little bit heavier, a little bit deeper, I wanted that, that seven foot medium TI. Um, and it, I just, I love that rod too. It's like one of my favorite rods. So like, that's what I'm gonna throw it on. But you can throw it on spinning tackle, um, and then you can go to super light line, six, eight, you know, 10 pound if you want. But if you're gonna throw it on spinning stuff, I go with six or eight, and I definitely go with like the quarter ounce and less on the spinning tackle. One thing, this is 100% Mikey Ball's PSA that you need to know is no matter how you do it, when you cast these things, they spin. All right, the majority of them. Not the Kitex don't do it as bad, but like the, the Scottsboro, the Spark Shad. They friggin' they spin when you cast them and you can't get around it. It, it. It's just a part of the deal. So you need to make sure and pay attention like as your line spins up because freaking right now, like my line's kind of wrapping around my tip whenever I stop it, but it's going to happen. So just have that in your head. It's, it's nothing abnormal, but it is gonna happen. Last but not least, like what colors were we throwing? Uh, this was a dirty hitch. Um, in the spark shad, what I got right here, I have silver shad. You know, these are micro swim baits. Right now, water visibility, you can see down like 10 feet, 12 feet maybe. So it's super clear. Like, you're not gonna be throwing like a freaking gold, like black, blue, whatever. It, this isn't that kind of deal. I mean, it, you actually, you know what? I should never say never because who knows? On Okeechobee, that, that might actually work when it gets really beat up and it's tough. But for the most part, you know, transparent baits try to mimic your forage whether it's small brim whether in this case it's going to be blueback herring or shad but they are going to be kind of usually my best bet dude when it comes to colors is something like smoky whitish light but then get just a touch of green that dirty hitch has a touch of green match your water like this water if you can see it's super duper green and that that water colors the bait fish and and it makes them a certain kind of hue and usually it involves green so that's kind of like my best you know i don't know what do you call it like my best rule of thumb one more thing last but not least here you know you don't always have to put them on a ball head that ball head from scottsboro is absolutely sick it's a fine wire hook that's another reason that you want to throw it on some lighter stuff but another option is this guy you see that's amino with a kitek right there amino is just an underspin style bait it's another perfect carrier for those micro swim baits it, it's a finesse presentation and it gives a little bit more flash today we tried throwing it a bit we got knocked a couple times but it didn't work but if you need like say it's a little windier say you need to displace a little more water or maybe there's more like balls of bait fish and you want to mimic like a couple bait fish together that underspin is absolutely killer. Plus, it gives you a little bit more like report back on the rod when you're um, when you're reeling. That that little swim bait, you you don't feel much of that ta the the tail wagging. It's more just kind of you're just pulsing it. And you know it's wagging. This guy, you're gonna actually feel it kind of like fluttering and swimming. Um, so it's a good option. Yeah, if you got some chop on the water, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's not. That's just the way it works. Another thing this is really good for is when the fish are suspended. We were fishing that swim bait pretty much on the bottom, but we were popping it up off the top. But if you got fish that are up in the water column a little bit, that underspin is killer. 
thank you guys for tuning into these videos. You know, you guys know a lot more about finesse fishing than me, so please drop comments, drop recommendations, any kind of insight that you can give me when it comes to micro swim baits down in the comments box. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you've tried, what's worked, what's not. But I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. Like literally, dude, you guys have grown this channel. It's a freaking small channel. It's a grassroots channel. I try to bring you raw, real fishing, uncut, and then have a little fun with bog, right? Oh, get a bog. All right, so give it a like for bog. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and then check this out. So YouTube kind of like doesn't like me. So make sure you turn on your notifications with these videos. If you guys love seeing big Florida bass, some of these finesse techniques, fishing like Gunnersville, turn on your notifications. Do me a favor. That's all I ask because YouTube is like, no Mikey buzz for you. So <laughs> with that, thank you guys for tuning in. We are out. Peace.